let's get started. You have four pattern pieces. You have two flounce pieces. You have flounce one and you have flounce two. And you have three pieces for the train. Piece one and two are connected. So you only need to attach piece three to piece one and two. So you wanna cut away the line of piece three and you want to leave the excess paper of train one and two. Then you want to overlap train piece three to train piece one and two and glue it down. You can use tape or you can use glue or you can even use pens. This is just to keep the pattern pieces intact so they won't shift when you're cutting out the fabric. So uh, back to the flounces, I'm going to grab flounce piece two and flounce piece two, you have to cut that inner line, cut along that inner line because both flounces need to be the same length. So I'll go ahead and cut that away. So as you're cutting away, you'll notice there are some marks on the flounce. Those are the notches. They are marked two and a half inches apart to make a five inch wide pleat. Make sure you mark both flounce pieces. Now that we've prepped and cut all the pattern pieces, we've adhered train piece three to train piece one and two. Let's focus on the train. So what I have under the pattern is two and a half yards of taffeta fabric that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics. Their fabric comes on a bolt, so it's already folded. Um, I just need to make sure it's equally folded, salvage to salvage. And you're going to place the pattern on the fold of the fabric. Now keep in mind, this pattern is based on fabric that is 50 to 60 inches wide. Okay, now we're ready to cut out the train. Now that we have cut out the train, what we're gonna do is serge around the raw edges just to clean it up. And then we're gonna set that train to the side. Now for the flounces, I am using the Casa Solid Matte Satin. I am measuring out 60 inches. And once I measure out 60 inches, I'm gonna fold that in half and I'm gonna cut it away. I'm using about 30 yards of this Casa Matte Satin to make my flounces. Make sure your fabric is straightened before you lay down your pattern pieces. I'm stacking my fabric three layers high. Okay, so I normally use washers as weights to hold down the pattern, but you may want to pin the pattern down to secure it into place if you're using electrical scissors because the scissors will vibrate and move the washers out of place. Okay, make sure you cut around the entire flounced pattern piece.
Now that we've cut all of our pattern pieces, I'm going to lay the piece flat and cut down one side. So now we have our flounce. And now you want to cut down one side of all the pattern pieces. So we're going to take our flounces and we're going to place them right sides together. If you choose to do a French seam to enclose the raw edges, you can do so. I'm choosing to do a regular stitch and I'm going to clean up the raw edges by serging it. So after we've cut down one side of all the flounce pieces, we're going to take flounce one and pin those together and we're going to take flounce two and pin those together. Then we're going to head to the sewing machine to stitch them up. So for flounce one, you're going to stitch it together using a half an inch seam allowance. And for flounce two, you'll stitch that together using three quarters of an inch seam allowance. After stitching up the flounces, you want to take it over to your serger to clean up the raw edges. Now that we have stitched and serged our seams, we're going to press the seams flat. Now for the fun part, stitching down the horsehair braid. I'm using two inch horsehair braid and I'm going to Pin down the horsehair braid onto the flounce and I'm going to take it to the serger and serge. I like to use the serger because it's quicker. Now make sure you disengage the blade before you start serging. So after serging down the horsehair braid onto the right side of the fabric you want to flip the horsehair braid onto the wrong side of the fabric and you want to top stitch do the top stitch the reason why I do the top stitch is to keep everything into place so when I'm pulling the threads it won't shift let's move on to pleating the flounces so I'm leaving a half an inch seam allowance and you should have marked your notches, which are two and a half inches apart. So I'm gonna to continue to pleat my flounces and you should end up with five inch wide pleats. Once you are finished pleating your flounces, they should look like this. You want to finish off the raw edges with the serger and then you want to grab the base and lay it out flat. You want to mark a half an inch from the raw edge and then you want to get your ruler and you want to from that half an inch mark you want to mark guidelines I'm marking mine about a half an inch apart but you may want to do two inches apart After we've marked our guidelines, we're going to take the base to the sewing machine and you want to start at the back seam. You want to take your pleated flounces and place those under the presser foot. 
I'm going to start sewing the pleated flounce one inch from the raw edge. And I'm using a three and a half inch stitch length. It may be helpful to roll the rest of the base up to keep it out the way. And you just want to continue to sew around in a spiral along the guideline. Remove your sewing machine compartment so you can have full access of the free arm. This completes the ruffle train tutorial. You can attach any formal dress along with a petticoat for a complete look. Period.